Please be seated. Good morning. I'm pleased to declare the 2010 graduate commencement exercises for Quinnipiac University officially open. Would you please stand for the invocation, which will be delivered by Rabbi Rena Judd, University Rabbi. Hello, hello, congratulations. Soon, very soon, you will step into the lives you have hereby been preparing for. May the tools you have acquired, the knowledge and wisdom, the understanding, the empathy, and the enlightenment you have gained enable you to better your world person by person, elevating the status of all that is good and holy. You may be seated. I'd like to take a moment to recognize the members of our platform party, which consists of our honorary degree recipient, who you'll meet in a few moments, university administrators, and the deans and program directors of our schools and college. It is now my honor to present Dr. John L. Leahy, president of Quinnipiac University, who will bring you greetings on behalf of the university community. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to all of you on this joyous occasion. To our graduates today, I want to extend my heartiest congratulations. You should all feel very proud of your accomplishments and most deserving of the degrees that will be conferred upon you. This year's graduating class is not only our largest ever, but in many ways the best. You've had exceptional performance in the classroom and in your field experiences. And as a result, there are many exciting and rewarding careers that await you. Quinnipiac's reputation continues to advance, both in terms of academic quality and national recognition. This achievement is clearly a consequence of the exceptional work of our outstanding faculty and the excellent leadership of our deans and program directors. In the final analysis, though, the quality of our programs will be judged best by our graduates and your personal and professional achievements in the years ahead. All of you are well aware of the, of the dramatic changes in our world economy and global society, including the unique challenges occurring today in the United States. Frankly, as a representative of my generation, the so-called baby boomers who are going to save the world, I feel more than a little bit guilty and embarrassed that we haven't turned the world or our country over to you in better condition. And yet my confidence in our future has never been greater because of the ability, experience, and education that your generation will bring to solving our national and global problems. I have every reason to believe that based on your performance at Quinnipiac, that you will all be leaders in your chosen professions and role models in your families and communities. And I trust that you will leave the world in much better condition for the generation that will follow you. Again, my congratulations and best wishes to each and every one of you. I now ask that Patrick Charmel, Cynthia Lord, and John Leahy come forward for the conferral of the honorary degree. Pat Charmel. As president and CEO of Griffin Hospital and its parent organization, Griffin Health Services, you have spearheaded efforts to provide innovative and quality medical care and to empower patients to fully participate in their own healing processes. In addition, as CEO of the not-for-profit Plain Tree Inc., you work with more than 150 premier healthcare providers to humanize the hospital experience for patients in this country and abroad. After earning a bachelor's degree in health administration from Quinnipiac, you went on to earn a master's in public health from Yale. You began working at Griffin as an intern and 31 years later are stationed at its helm. Under your leadership, Griffin has earned numerous awards 
including the 2009 Outstanding Patient Experience Award and Distinguished Hospital for Clinical Excellence Award from Health Grades. Most notably, Griffin has appeared on the Fortune Magazine list of the 100 best companies to work for in America for 10 consecutive years. You currently serve as president of Quinnipiac's Alumni Association National Board of Governors. In 2008, Quinnipiac honored you with the Distinguished Alumni Award. You also have served on the National Advisory Council for Healthcare Research and Quality and sit on the Board of Qualidon. In recognition of your extraordinary leadership in healthcare and your significant contributions to advancing patient care, Quinnipiac University is pleased to confer upon you the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters this ninth day of May, 2010. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations, Pat. It is now my pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker, Patrick Charmel. President Leahy, fellow trustees, members of the distinguished faculty, parents, family, friends, and above all graduates, thank you for giving me the privileges of addressing you today. It is an incredible honor for which I'm truly grateful. To the more than 500 scholars receiving your graduate degree today, congratulations and thank you for letting me share this momentous occasion with you. It marks a tremendous achievement of which you should be very proud. To the parents of our graduates, I don't need to tell you to, that you should be proud. We can all see that you're beaming with pride today. I'm sure that in addition to pride, you're feeling a sense of relief that the long journey from daycare to kindergarten into elementary school through high school, college, and now graduate school is over. Don't feel guilty. You earned that feeling of relief along with your sense of pride. You've also earned our gratitude. Your child's academic achievement is due in no small part to your encouragement and support, both financial and emotional, and the importance you place on education, diligence, and personal sacrifice throughout your child's life. On this Mother's Day, I want to especially thank mothers of our graduates for the masterful way that they have used guilt to motivate their child when their expectations <laughs> weren't met. It's the avoidance of that guilt that motivates many of us to overachieve. Let's face it, we're recognizing 550 overachievers today. So mom, congratulations, you did a great job. I have to admit that being asked by my alma mater to give a commencement address is anxiety provoking. You wanna live up to the expectations that you have something relevant, profound, and inspirational to say. That you can provide graduates with keen insights and practical advice that will help them achieve career success in a fulfilling life, and most of all, that you can give an address that is memorable. What helped to relieve my anxiety was the realization that I have no specific recollection of my commencement address that was given during my, either my college graduation ceremony here at Quinnipiac or my graduate school graduation. My college graduation commencement speaker was Boston University biochemistry professor and renowned science fiction, science fiction author Isaac Asimov. Asimov was a prolific writer with a genius IQ, so I have no doubt that his address was both eloquent and profound. It just must have been a little too cerebral to be memorable. As for my graduate school commencement speaker, I don't even remember who it was. I'm sure that it was either a famous actor who spoke about the importance of being politically active or a famous politician who talked about the importance of being a good actor. <laughs> Again, not terribly memorable. So the chances are that if I fail to live up to your expectations, the disappointment will be short-lived. 
you will soon forget my less than memorable performance. Recognizing this certainly takes some of the pressure off. Another way to relieve my anxiety is to lower your expectations. You need to know that I'm just a kid from New Jersey that came to Connecticut to attend Quinnipiac, which was one of the best decisions of my life. I worked hard and took advantage of everything that this university, then college, had to offer, which put me on the right path that has led to some level of success. But success is relative. Just look at my home state. It produced great scientists and inventors like Thomas Edison, great musicians like Frank Sinatra and Bruce Springsteen, and great cultural icons like Snooky and the Situation. <laughs> Let me assure you, before I proceed, that relatively speaking, I'm much closer on, on the capability and accomplishment scale to Snooky than I am to Edison. So graduates, please keep that in mind as you consider my advice. Okay, now that I've dealt with my anxiety, let me help you deal with yours. Those of you that decided to pursue a graduate degree after college back in 2008 because of the economic crisis, rising unemployment, lousy job prospects, and because your parents agreed to pay your graduate school tuition to keep you from moving back home, <laughs> might be thinking about a PhD right now since Unemployment is the highest it's been during the economic downturn, and it's still rising. Adding to your anxiety are the pundits talking about the new normal and structural versus cyclical unemployment, saying that whole industries like auto manufacturing, financial services, real estate development, home building have been wiped out, and millions of jobs lost in those and other industries are never coming back. Those of you that have jobs are probably concerned that the opportunity for career advancement that you thought a graduate degree would give you may not materialize. Your anxiety and concern are understandable, but experience tells me that there's more reason for optimism than anxiety. I graduated from Quinnipiac in 1981. July of that year was the start of the second of two back-to-back -back recessions. The Federal Reserve, led by Paul Volcker, was forced to raise interest rates to unprecedented levels to combat runaway inflation, which plunged the country into a deep recession. In September that year, I started a two-year master's degree program. Almost two years later, at the beginning of 1983, the unemployment rate was 10.8%, the highest rate since the Great Depression. By the time I graduated in May of 1983, Unemployment had fallen to 10.1%, which is still very high and higher than unemployment that we face today. Like today, pessimism was pervasive. Believe it or not, the 1983 annual report of the President's Council of Economic Advisors proclaimed that unemployment will continue to fall but plateau at 6 to 7% due to structural unemployment. Well, when the recession ended, Unemployment slowly but steadily declined and was down to 5.3% five years later when the expansion that followed the so-called structural employment, the country returned to prosperity, and all my classmates found a job in their chosen field and went on to be quite successful. I have no doubt that you will enjoy similar success. Take comfort in knowing that your decision to further your education and obtain an a graduate degree was a good one. It was a great investment in your future. The likely return on that investment is apparent in the fact that the current unemployment rate for those holding an advanced degree is under 5%, or half of the overall unemployment rate. What made it an even smarter investment is the fact that you chose Quinnipiac for that education. When I attended Quinnipiac 30 years ago, it was a well-known, it was well known in New England, New York, and New Jersey, and despite having a name that was difficult to pronounce, it enjoyed a solid reputation as a good small college best known for preparing its students for careers in accounting and in the allied health professions. It was often referred to back then by some as a diamond in the rough. It had a talented, dedicated, and long-serving faculty made up of great teachers that were very accessible and cared about the development of their students. The campus offered a beautiful setting at the base of Sleeping Giant Mountain and a strong sense of community. But there was always a notion that Quinnipiac had greater potential that hadn't been realized. Since graduation, I've had the pleasure of watching that diamond in the rough be slowly and carefully cut and polished 
to reveal its many facets and true brilliance. For the past 20 plus years, the job of diamond cutter has been entrusted to President John Leahy, who has proven to be a master. A visionary leader, Dr. Leahy saw the potential of Quinnipiac and was able to articulate his vision of what Quinnipiac could be in a manner that compelled others to join in its pursuit. Together with a talented and dedicated management team, he has led Quinnipiac on a transformational journey, the results of which have been nothing short of astounding. We have seen the enhancement of the university's academic offerings, including the establishment of the law school and many new graduate programs, the assembling of a world-class faculty and staff, and aggressive campus expansion, including the development of exceptional new facilities, such as the Eklund Health Science Center, the McMahon Mass Communication Center, and the more recent TD Bank North Center, Westview and Crescent Residence Halls, and the magnificent new North Haven Graduate Campus that will house the university's planned medical school. Dr. Leahy recently reminded us that the journey continues when he indicated Quinnipiac is now positioned to join the ranks of the country's premier universities and called on the entire university community to set and pursue ambitious goals for the achievement of academic excellence and national prominence. To recognize and show its appreciation for his visionary leadership and his relentless pursuit of excellence over more than 20 years of dedicated service to Quinnipiac, the Alumni Board of Governors, of which I am chairman, voted unanimously to extend the rights and privileges of honorary membership in the Quinnipiac Alumni Association to President Leahy, who had the misfortune of graduating from a university other than Quinnipiac. <laughs> the Board of Governors concluded that there was no better way to honor President Leahy than to embrace him as an alumnus of the university that he has led with such distinction. I'm sure that our graduates who become alumni today share my pride and that of Quinnipiac's 30,000 other alumni in having Dr. Leahy as part of our association. Dr. Leahy, thank you for removing all doubt that a Quinnipiac education is a good investment and one that increases in value over time. Graduates, now that I rid you of your anxiety about your future, let me use my remaining time to share a few things that I've learned from my experience that may benefit you as you begin the next stage of life's journey. The advice is more practical than inspirational, but I hope that you find value in it nonetheless. While your academic, academic accomplishments as well as your considerable talent and ability will give you many opportunities, it's important to exploit every opportunity you're given to the fullest and resist the temptation to quickly trade in one opportunity for what looks like the next best thing. Oftentimes, it's better to bloom where you're planted rather than seek a bigger pot. I learned this early on and it has been reinforced throughout my life. As a high school junior, I applied to every college that offered the relatively new and still quite rare undergraduate health services administration major after my guidance counselor somehow talked me into pursuing a career in hospital management. I still ask myself what he saw in the results of my career aptitude test that prompted this. Despite my many college applications, I had my heart set on Penn State University which was motivated by the fact that I was a fan of Penn State football and that Joe Paterno's niece was a high school classmate. While I was admitted to Penn State, I was not assigned to the main campus in State College, but to the York campus in far western Pennsylvania, more than 100 miles away. I declined Penn State's offer of admission and chose Quinnipiac instead. I did this with every intention of transferring to Penn State at the end of my sophomore year. I was determined to make the best of my two years at Quinnipiac and quickly became an active participant in the college's academic and social life. I found Quinnipiac to be fertile ground and I began to bloom. When sophomore year arrived, I threw away the Penn State transfer application and never looked back. I've had a similar experience during my career. I joined Griffin Hospital as a 19-year-old student intern while attending Quinnipiac. I also did my graduate school pr practicum there and was hired on as a junior administrator after graduation. 
Griffin is a relatively small hospital, and at the time it suffered from a poor reputation and resulting poor financial performance. It was the kind of organization that most career-minded young executives would use as a stepping stone to their next job in a larger, more prestigious hospital. Quickly moving from smaller to larger, from unknown to known, and from lower paid to higher paid is the conventional career path that one is expected to take. In fact, those that don't are frequently told that they are jeopardizing their career. Following convention, I told my colleagues at Griffin that I would stay just two years before moving on. I quickly realized that at Griffin, unlike in a larger organization, I could make a difference. I realized that the intimacy of a smaller organization allowed me to build strong working relationships with my colleagues that enhanced my effectiveness and gave me a sense of belonging that I found comforting. 30 years and scores of headhunter calls later, many of those calls made to tell me that I was jeopardizing my career by not pursuing other opportunities. I'm still at Griffin, which is now a little larger and considered by many to be one of the best hospitals in the country. Time after time, I've seen others opt for a bigger pot, only to have their growth stunted and to find fulfillment they sought evade them. Regardless of the environment that you find yourself in, always remember that you have more potential to influence change than you realize, and never let your assumptions about what is possible limit your achievements. Throughout my career, I've seen people achieve things in both their personal and professional life that I never thought possible. It was often the individual that ignored his or her perceived limitations or the fact that something had never been done before. In my industry, it was thought that the needs of hospitalized patients were secondary to those of caregivers. Facilities were designed, policies and practices were developed, and rules were written to serve the interest of healthcare professionals to ensure that they can dispense care without interruption or distraction. The result? was inattentive, impersonal, and often ineffective care, as well as disengaged and dissatisfied patients and family. No one questioned the status quo until a young Argentinian woman, after a very unpleasant but not atypical hospitalization in a California teaching hospital, asked why she wasn't provided with information about her care and treatment, why she was talked down to and ignored, why her family was prevented from being with her, why her privacy was invaded, why she was allowed to suffer in pain, and why her room was stark and depressing. Not satisfied with the lack of response she received, the woman, Angie Terriot, established the Consumer Health Library in a neighborhood of the California Teaching Hospital. The library created a groundswell of educated consumers who demanded to be actively involved in decisions affecting their care, and that caregivers be more responsive to their needs. The organization that Angie founded called Plain Tree, named after the variety of sy sycamore tree under which Hippocrates taught his medical students, worked with the hospital that eventually responded to its community's call for change to develop a new model of care delivery designed to personalize, humanize, and demystify care. Plain Tree, now part of the organization that I lead, implemented that new patient-centered care model in hospitals across the United States, in Canada, South America, Scandinavia, and the Far East. Millions of patients have benefited from the work started by a woman who realized her potential for influence change by never limiting what she thought was possible. In order for you to achieve your full potential, you must remember that you're leaving the academic setting where you're rewarded for demonstrating that you're smarter than others. In the world outside of academia, acting like or even thinking that you're the smartest person in the room will actually hold you back. Instead, help help others look smarter than they are. Despite your fine Quinnipiac education, you'll find out that you're not smart as you think you are. That realization is a good thing. Please resist the temptation to constantly remind others how smart you are and that you hold a graduate degree. To help you resist, tell yourself that everyone knows that our creator has a great sense of fairness and equity. He always he or she always compensates. Those that get the big brains always get short change somewhere else. I apologize to the PhDs if, in the audience if that made you feel a little uncomfortable. I want to leave you by reminding you that you have been blessed with tremendous talent and intellect. 
you are compensating in adequacy notwithstanding. And to find education, you've enjoyed the support of your family and you've had access to resources that many lack. All of this gives you a tremendous advantage over most others in society. You can use that advantage solely for your personal benefit, which may give you some satisfaction and the sense of security that is the most basic of human needs. But to be truly fulfilled, you must use your advantage to benefit others less fortunate than you are. True satisfaction comes from doing work that is meaningful, that has purpose, and that makes a positive difference in the life of others. If you are fortunate like I am, your vocation will afford you the opportunity to do this work. Others will have to pursue the opportunity through volunteerism. I was reminded of the personal benefits of giving back recently when I talked to one of my hospital's more than 350 active volunteers. He described his numerous volunteer and philanthropic activities in charitable organizations throughout our community which to me sounded overwhelming. I asked why he gave so much of his time and treasure to these organizations. He told me that there are two types of people in the world, givers and takers. He explained that takers eat better and givers sleep better, and that he would much rather sleep well than eat well. I could tell that he was a very content man. When you arrived at your chair this morning, you found a marble taped to the seat, and you probably were wondering why. It's the graduates that have the marbles, by the way. <laughs> Some time ago, a wonderful Griffin Hospital nurse named Bonnie Halligan was caring for a patient facing a devastating illness. She wanted to give him something special. While shopping with her son, she looked for some marbles that were light, bright, and cheerful in, cover, in color to lift her patient's spirits. All she can find were black marbles. She reluctantly put them in her shopping cart, and while shopping, the bag of marbles, marbles fell over and caught the light. Bonnie noticed that the marbles weren't black, but were indeed a deep cobalt blue. The message for Bonnie was that things look different when seen in a different light. Bonnie now gives a marble to all her patients and shares her story with them in hope that it will inspire them to overcome life's challenges by seeing them from a different, more optimistic perspective, by placing them in a different light. I'm telling you Bonnie's story and giving you a marble this morning to remind you to, to maintain your optimism and also to remind you that there are many people that need your help to maintain theirs. If you remember nothing else about my address, remember your marble. Once again, congratulations for your astounding, outstanding, <laughs> congrat, <laughs> congratulations on your outstanding achievement. Thank you, Quinnipiac, for my honorary degree and for inviting me to speak here today. Best wishes to all of you for a very happy and fulfilling life. Thank you very much, Pat. We will now begin with a presentation of the degree candidates. Now my privilege to introduce Dr. Hans Bergman, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. Greetings and congratulations from the College of Arts and Sciences. I ask the candidates for the Master of Science, Molecular and Cell Biology to please rise and approach the platform. Christopher C. Castaldi. Brian J. Cusack. Allison Manning. Melissa J. Mulla. Jennifer Pacheco. Nasser Ali Saya. Mr. 
Mr. President, I have the honor to present the candidates for the degree of Master of Science, Molecular and Cell Biology. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Science in Molecular and Cell Biology with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to all of you. It's now my privilege to introduce Dr. Matthew O'Connor, Dean of the School of Business. Greetings from the School of Business and congratulations to all of today's graduates. Will the candidates for the degree Master of Business Administration please rise and approach the platform. Courtney Amarez. Blanca Magdolna Balaj. Catherine Boucher. Joseph T. Calabro. Aaron Page Carrero. Yashim Chill. Richard E. Dabkowski. Andrew G. Finelli. Michael L. Fisher. Corey N. Fisk. Peter R. Fusco. Mary Catherine Gamble. Robert M. Giandalone. Michael A. Giglietti. Nicole Goldstein. Ryan T. Heafy. Patrick J. Hennigan. Joshua L. Hurdle. Benjamin Renwick Jordan. Aaron P. Kerner. Ryan M. Krauchik. John J. Lafferty. Laura C. Lana. Keith M. Levine. Robert Lista, Jr. Antoinette Maljevic. Griffin A. McGrath. Michael R. Medina. Julie F. Mena. Trevor R. Mencher. Kosi Morita. Alyssa D. Mosley. Michael D. Oscandi. Garris Papayani. Luke John Pence. Fernando P. Perez. Greg J. Riley. Brittany T. Sanders. Alexander J. Saris. Daniel M. Schutzbank. Jill E. Seward. Regina R. Skirvin. Jessica M. Thomas. Jonathan Chad Thomas. Anastasios K. Benikiotis. Vincent Van Oss. Jeff Valero. 
Ryan D. Watts. Ryan M. Wessendorf. Michael Evan Wishnow. Rebecca B. Wright. Mr. Pre the, the, will the candidates please rise? Mr. President, I have the honor to present to you the candidates for the degree Master of Business Administration. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Business Administration with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to all of you. Will the candidates for the degree Master of Business Administration, Healthcare Management, please approach the podium? Olainka Balagan. Larry Jeffrey Barnett. Rick J. Coppola. Sarah E. Hacker. Bradley T. Hill. Jesse T. Kaiser. Paul M. Kersiak. Melissa L. Santarella. Kimberly M. Stafari. Will the candidates for the degree Master of Business Administration, Health Care Management, please rise? Mr. President, I have the honor to present to you the candidates for the degree Master of Business Administration, Health Care Management. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Business Administration in Health Care Management with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to all of you. Will the candidates for the degree Master of Health Administration please approach the platform? Marlene Williams. Yeah, yeah. Mr. President, I have the honor of presenting the candidate for the degree Master of Health Administration. Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you, Marlene, the degree of Master of Health Administration with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. <laughs> Will the candidates for the degree Master of Science Computer Information Systems please approach the platform? Tef Yakova. Dominique T. Johnson. John J. McHenry. Kristen Kramer Mills. Fong Xuan Nagoyan. Jarvis Nunez. Henry Ung. Will the candidates for the degree Master of Science Computer Information Systems please rise? Mr. President, I have the honor of presenting to you the candidates for the degree Master of Science Computer Information Systems. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Science in Computer Information Systems with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to all of you. Will the candidates for the degree Master of Science Organizational Leadership please approach the platform? Cynthia K. Alteri. 
Sue Bascom Erasmus. Mary Beth G. Antonio. Richard G. Kuchicki. Jill C. McKeown. Richard W. Mercier. Alana Marissa Negri. Francis Leo Pearson, Jr. Will the candidates for the degree Master of Science Organizational Leadership please rise? Mr. President, I have the honor of presenting to you the candidates for the degree Master of Science in Organizational Leadership. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Science in Organizational Leadership with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. It's now my privilege to introduce Michelle Moore, Interim Dean of the School of Communications. Will the candidates for the Master of Science in Interactive Communications please rise and approach the platform. Shura Boone. <laughs> Neha Bawa. Erica Dietrich. Lauren M. Delito. James A. Ford. Karen Garrett. Janelle M. Gonzalez. Alan Hoving. Tabor Lightfoot. Katie McLaughlin. Scott J. Messina. Carly N. Nartowitz. Emily Kara Perkins. Jillian Rader. Jennifer Rock. Maria K. Shanahan. Megan Renee Turner. Kelly Christine Utgrub. Carol A. Vassar Pettit. Jillian Mora Zebeck. Mr. President, I have the honor to present to you the candidates for the Master of Science in Interactive Communication. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Science in Interactive Communication with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to all of you. Will the candidates for the Masters of Science in Journalism please rise and approach the platform? Elizabeth R. Alden. Marie A. Bonelli. 
David M. Clark. Courtney Ann Parent. Lissa L. Smith. Jeannie G. Gina Figliazium. Melissa, I'm sorry, Melanie S. Williams. Mr. President, I have the honor to present to you candidates for the Master of Science in Journalism. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Science in Journalism with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Will the candidates for the Master of Science in Public Relations please rise and approach the platform. Nina J. Hutchko. Mackenzie E. McIntyre. Patrick D. Salvas. Kevin M. Sokolsky. Mr. President, I have the honor to present to you candidates for the Master of Science in Public Relations. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon the four of you the degree of Master of Science in Public Relations with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to all of you. Congratulations to all of you. It's now my privilege to introduce Dr. Cynthia Duby, Dean of the School of Education. Good morning. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in Teaching in Elementary Education please approach the platform? <laughs> and, and there is no. Jenna E. Bear, Jessica H. Benoit, Andrea F. Brodash, Laura A. Burroughs, Kelly A. Carbone, Caitlin Marcella Sanciolo, Larissa A. Krakow, mm -hmm. Colleen M. Daniels, Jennifer Catherine Dauphiné, Kara G. Emrick, Hannah K. Farrell, Gina M. Fasano, Laura M. Fico, Renee S. Friedman, Sarah R. Gianjobi, Christina N. Gianni, Eileen Denise Gonzalez, Amanda Yvette Gonzalez, Kelly A. Harrington. Laura Elizabeth Hoke. Laura is a special niece. <laughs> Ashley L. Holton. Roseanne Iavino, Megan Ann Joyce, C. 
Sarah B. Kaufman. Ashley L. Krebs. Aaron E. Lisinski. Allison A. Los. Dana L. Marone. Jessica Mastriani. Alexa F. Minio. Valerie Page Moore. Jamie L. Myers. Jacqueline A. Norell. Jonathan James Nice. Tara Chinoa Obachowski. Megan A. Ogurik. Shannon L. O'Hay. Vanessa J. Oliveri. Patricia H. O'Malley. Dana M. Palmer. Elise M. Phoenix. Emily A. Potts. Eric E. Rank. Catherine A. Renganeski. Aaron M. Rimmer. Kristen L. Romano. Brianna L. Rooney. Stephanie D. Sue. Jenna M. Stafford. Samantha H. Schwartz. Michelle Trulio. <laughs> Michelle R. Vayuso. Stephanie L. Wojtek. Rachel M. Weintraub. Christine E. White. Nicole D. Williams. Mr. President, it is my honor to present to you candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in Teaching Elementary Education. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts in Teaching in Elementary Education with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to all of you. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in Teaching in Secondary Education please approach the platform. Timothy E. Baker. Jessica L. Barbado. Anthony R. Benvenuto. Amanda C. Bragg. Kristen N. Carbone. Andrea Carol Saletti. Jessica K. Christensen. K. J. Colello. Amanda J. Condal. Danielle L. Cullinane, Deanna Marie Curcio, Lisa A. D'Agostino, Daniela J. D'Souza, Rhoda E. Emmanuel, Nicholas F. Feathern, Erica J. Feldman, K. 
Kathleen Gavin, Patrick L. Hebersang, Carrie L. Hurley, Jason L. Jeanette, Elizabeth R. Kajahiro, Brian J. Klasner, Rebecca M. Klinsport, John D. Kursawa, Allison M. Lake, Jessica R. Link, Marissa A. Manzelli, Daniel C. Martin, Jennifer Marie Massey, Amanda M. Minutillo, Jacqueline A. Morrissey, James M. Newfeld, Danielle C. Normandin, Stephanie M. Ostepchuk, Meredith A. Paselli, Anthony J. Paterno, Sandy Placharczyk, Amanda J. Reynas, Andrew Reinold, Julie M. Rich, Jennifer Christine Rivera, Shannon L. Romagnolo, Elizabeth A. Ryan, Audra C. Schnepp, Tyler M. Shuck, Christine M. Stolfi, Gregory Switeg, Christy L. Varvero, Emily E. Weed, Catherine Helen Zadi, Mr. President, it is my honor to present to you candidates for the degree of Master of Arts in Teaching in Secondary Education. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts in Teaching in Middle and Secondary Education with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to all of you. Will candidates for the six-year diploma in educational leadership please approach the platform. John J. Albinger. Stacy L. D'Antonio. Santo J. Galatioto, Jr. Stephanie L. Kubasek. Annette M. Shelbrack, Sharon M. Shirley. Mr. President, it is my honor to present to you candidates for the six-year diploma in educational leadership. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of six-year diploma in educational leadership with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to all of you. On behalf of the faculty and myself, 
in the School of Education, congratulations to all of you today. And to our new teachers and new school leaders, I send you all a hug. Thank you. It's now my privilege to introduce Dr. Edward O'Connor, Dean of the School of Health Sciences. Will the candidates for the degree Master of Health Sciences in Cardiovascular Perfusion please come to the platform? Garang S. Shastri. Thomas F. Stapleton. Mr. President, it is my honor to present candidates for the degree Master of Health Sciences in Cardiovascular Perfusion. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon both of you the degree of Master of Health Science in Cardiovascular Perfusion with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to both of you. Will candidates for the degree Master of Health Sciences in Medical Laboratory Sciences please come to the platform? David J. Bridgewater. Karen Damon Callahan. Ariana Isabella de Benedetto. David Armando Giusti. Jody Ann N. Gordon. Karen Reynolds O'Keefe. Sapna R. Patel. Natalie Annette Pelletier. Christine M. Podolsky. Van Nguyen. Julie Christine Spear. Will the candidates please rise? Mr. President, I have the honor to present to you candidates for the degree Master of Health Sciences, Medical Laboratory Sciences. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Health Science in Medical Laboratory Sciences with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to all of you. Will candidates for the degree Master of Health Science Pathologist assistants, please come to the platform. David Beckles. Hang on to these things. Aaron Ann Borhart. Jessica Lee Botello. Dana Brown. Monique J. Donju. Jennifer Della Piana. Anna Lee Escobedo. Megan S. Flynn. Elizabeth Mary Hamir. Andrew P. Imperati. Jill R. Johnson Derry. Linda Lee. William W. Lewis. Danielle Moynihan. Jennifer L. Pavlonis. Anthony Selner, Jessica Robin Wallace, Jennifer Welch, Will 
the candidates please rise. Mr. President, I have the honor to present to you candidates for the degree Master of Health Science, Pathologist Assistant. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Health Science and Pathologist Assistant with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to all of you. Will the candidates for the degree Master of Health Science, Physician Assistant, please come to the platform. Nicole Catherine Abate. Christina M. Aiello. Christine K. Ofterhide. Daniel Pop Baxter. Katrina Ann Bear. Carolina Benavides. Scott R. Borelli. Brenna B. Boker. Kate E. Bukowski. Amanda M. M. Candela. Shannon E. Carey. Brett D. DeVries. Keith Francis DeSonier, Jr. Megan N. Dort. Maduri C. Earnshaw. Aaron Marie Floridia. Julie M. Gothier. Christopher M. Gelinas. Allison Bright Hanley. Lindsay C. Hatfield. Amy Elizabeth Hogan. Rebecca L. Jazerski. Shelby B. Kirby. Christina M. Langevin. Andrea C. Mays. Lisa A. McCarroll. Kristen K. McDonough. Lauren Elizabeth McFarland. Jennifer Servidad Mead. Carlin M. Masillis. Diana Milinarski. Jessica L. Murphy. Matthew William Musco. Carla W. Nearing. Megan A. Ostrich. Elizabeth Ortiz. Sheila E. O'Shea. Mittal Patel. Zinike Kionis. Hugo Jonathan Rays. Philip M. Roach. Michelle Ann Russell. Katie Marie Russo. Melissa S. Salonia. Jessica Ann Troy. Stephanie A. Vallette. Clinton Wheeler. Jessica A. White. Hannah B. Wilkinson. Alicia May Wills. Ho Ching Wong. Mr. President, I have the pleasure to present candidates for degree, Master of Health Sciences, Physician Assistant.
By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Health Science and Physician Assistant with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to all of you. Please be seated. Will candidates for the degree of Master of Health Science, Radiologist Assistant, please come to the platform. Kevin D. Connell. Brian J. Fournier. Wesley K. Shea. David S. Silva. Carrie L. Vincenzo. Mr. President, I have the pleasure to present candidates for the degree Master of Health Sciences and Radiologist Assistant. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Health Science and Radiologist Assistant with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to all of you. Will candidates for the degree of Master of Occupational Therapy please come to the floor? Caitlin D. Allen. Christine L. Alvanis. Megan K. Baird. Lori Ann Belfiore. Mario A. Bensavenga. Victoria I. Berger. Hannah F. Burnett, Stephanie Ann Blainar, Ashley S. Blatt, Caitlin A. Borchers, Heather M. Bro, Elizabeth M. Cantori, Kimberly M. Chomitz, Amy M. Coyne, Julie T. Croto, Caitlin M. DiGenova, Kelly R. Doherty, Jarrett J. Doton, Mallory L. Dunsevich. Allison R. Fulton, Christine A. Gardner, Heather E. Grant, Matthew P. Healy, Judith C. Caps, Jessica L. Koch, Kayla P. Kersey. Nazanin Manesh. Rebecca A. Merriam. Gabrielle A. Mitchell. Blurta Mustafa. Pamela J. Olson. Aaron N. Overdevest. Alyssa C. Pacheco. Jessica L. Pacheco. Kristen L. Pomisano. Courtney M. Powers. Farah J. Prochi. Yadira A. Reyes. Keisha J. Robitaille. Bridget R. Rohan. Nicole C. Sawyer. Marissa I. Schwartz. 
Samantha L. Schwartz. Laura E. Shanley. Kelly A. Stafford. Fasuli G. Triana. Nicole M. Trowbridge. Nicole M. Ugenti. Rachel P. Wallens. Courtney L. Wetmore. Jamie N. Whiting. Kaylin M. Wickline. Amelia L. Wilson. Melissa A. Yasino. Mr. President, I have the honor to present to you candidates for the degree Master of Occupational Therapy. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Occupational Therapy with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Occupational Therapy post-professional come to the platform? <laughs> Kimberly A. Mange. Claire Madonna Mulry. Michelle P. Nadal. Michelle A. Serbent. Mr. President, I have the honor to present to you candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Occupational Therapy Post-Professional. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Science in Occupational Therapy with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to all of you. Will the candidate degree for the Master of Physical Therapy please come? Yeah, we're going to the doctor. Will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Physical Therapy please come to the podium? <laughs> Meredith Ann Bagley. Amanda R. Blanchett. Gregory S. Byers. Kristen L. Carlson. Sarah K. Carter. Matthew Alberto Cefeli. Ashley E. Cowles. Megan A. Doherty. Jane C. Dumas. Patrick D. Edgecombe. Laura E. Evans. Shannon E. Ferguson. Carly A. Funk, Ashley N. Gola, Abigail L. Gosling, James V. Gottlieb, Jennifer Lynn Hirsch, Ann Catherine Hunt, James E. Kelly, Sarah Jean King, Kimberly L. McDougall, Kelly Ann Masterson, Courtney L. McGraw, Patricia E. Megan, Julie B. Mello, Brian Jake Marangola, Tyler J. Myers. Matthew J. Perillo. 
Mary L. Pease. Michael C. Pindar. Danielle Patera. Amanda K. Preslin. Dorian Eva Prince. Rachel A. C. Happy birthday, Mom. Jacqueline M. Smith. Lauren Julia Soltes. Emily C. Sprague. Christine M. Swisbin. Ryan R. Tower. Kaylin E. Tracy. Catherine Marie Err. Lindsay M. Uzensky. Cassandra M. Ward. Emily Shirkin Wong. Mr. President, I have the honor to present to you candidates for the degree Doctor of Physical Therapy. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Physical Therapy with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to all of you. Please be seated. Will candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Nursing, Nurse Practitioner, please come to the podium. Marjan C. Adib Yazdi. Christina Mikrut Barrows. Edwin F. Bernabe. Danielle A. DiGeronimo. Kenneth M. Fort. Kelly A. Fryer. Wendy Gasick, Elaine D. Gayeski, Anita Gilbert, Mark Anthony Sisson Gregorio, Brittany Lehus, Elizabeth J. Marcusio. Cynthia V. Mason, Tracy Mazella, Amy E. Morales, Crystal A. Mosny, Alicia M. Noonan, Karazinia Noonan, Emily Lise O'Brien. Nicole K. Perella. Kavita R. Patel. Jennifer M. Plonsky. Tara L. Powers. Michelle Labicus Puglieris. Lori L. Skivas. Holly S. Smith. Diana Milagro Soto. Kathleen Sullivan. Megan K. Sullivan. Patricia R. Swim. Mr. President, I have the pleasure to 
present to you candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Nursing, Nurse Practitioner. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Master of Science in Nursing and Nurse Practitioner with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Please be seated. Will candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Nursing, Forensic Nurse Clinical Specialist, please come to the platform. Amanda Rose Atkin. Diana J. Maycomer. Mr. President, I have the honor to present to you candidates for the degree of Master of Science in Nursing, Forensic Nurse, Clinical Specialist. By the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I hereby confer upon both of you the degree of Master of Science in Nursing and Forensic Nurse, Clinical Specialist, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to both of you. On behalf of the faculty and staff of the School of Health Sciences, congratulations to all of today's graduates. Congratulations to all. I ask the audience to please stand and remain standing after the benediction until the platform party and all the members of the graduating class have recessed. The audience is cordially invited to a reception honoring the graduates immediately following the ceremony. It's now my privilege to ask Rabbi Rena Judd to come forward and close this year's exercises. May the source of all mercy bless and guide these men and women. May you choose health and goodness. May you, may we, our community and the time we live in be better for your being a part of us. Go forth in peace, go forth to peace, and have a really great life.
Thank you. 